Hello! So I realised it's been quite a while since I've actually done an old-fashioned gas mask test video, you know, where I sit in the bathroom, spray loads of air freshener, and hope the mask stops me choking. So I'm going to use the M40 today with the second skin on it, because I'm sure a lot of my American viewers will want to see how this does. I think I already tested this with banana oil, and I know since testing it with banana oil that it works. I'm just going to use the old C2 filter on it. If that lets vapours through, then I'll switch it to a newer filter, but we'll still see if this one works. So, you know, it's not going to be a complex video. I'm just going to basically sit in there, close the doors and windows so it's a confined space, spray a load of it and see if for a couple of minutes uh, I don't smell anything. And while I've got it on, we'll talk a bit about the mask. So the M40 has now been replaced in US Army service with the Avon M50, um, which I'll do a proper test video on as well at some point. But, um, yeah, let's look at the M40 and see how well it does. So, as you can see, the M40 is on my face. It appears to be pressurising, maybe I'll just get the straps a little bit tighter. Okay, now let's uh, put it to use. So here we go. I'll try and spray this um, actually visibly in front of the camera so you can see I'm spraying it, but I don't want to actually spray the camera itself. Okay, so let's see if the mask works. So, <clears throat> all I'm basically going to do is breathe through my nose, um, and I have to hope I don't detect the smell of lavender. And I can smell it very faintly, so let's just try tightening the mask up a bit more. still smell it a bit unfortunately. Um, that's better, I'd think the mask wasn't securely on my face at the chin area. So the M40 was the US mask that replaced the M17 because weirdly America had designed one of the best masks ever. I was going to have to say apologies if my voice keeps going a bit strange. It's because the drinking tube from this mask keeps poking me in the face because it doesn't retract which is a really poor design choice, but anyway. The M17, uh, back just after World War II, the US developed the M9 respirator, which was very ahead of its time. The M9 was, you know, a 60mm mask, it was lightweight, it was very futuristic for when it was made, you know, late 40s, early 50s, along with the British light anti-gas respirator, you know, the cutting edge of gas mask development. However, what happened then was that the US um, decided that rather than using a 60mm replaceable canister respirator, they wanted to make a futuristic cheek filter mask. Now, of course, the M17, despite being a well-made mask in terms of build quality, had the you know misfortune of being a cheek filter mask with the filters stored in the cheeks. You could not replace the filters when they were in use, meaning that if you were exposed to chemical or biological weapons, for example, you could not replace the filter if it started to run out with the mask on, so you were doomed. Um, you just had to hope you'd get out of the area before anything bad would happen. And of course, cheek filters being quite small and compact uh, wouldn't offer you all that long either. So, although America stuck with the M17 for quite a while, most European nations were using 40mm masks. After the Gulf War, um, although the M40 had been in development since the 80s as the XM40 mask, which looks a bit more similar to an M17, what ended up happening is the US saw that most of their NATO allies were using 40mm masks in the Gulf War and decided they really needed to rush ahead to the M40's production. And this is the mask you got. So as said, the silly thing of this mask is it does have a second skin on it which is the name for the mask that goes over your mask, because the actual mask is made out of silicon, which is very comfortable, but it's not the best material in the world to make a gas mask from, as I have said before, because um, masks made from silicon tend to actually, um, you know, degrade if exposed to blister agents and other like acidic chemical vapors and things like that. So, as a result, um, they had to make a mask to go on top of the mask. Um, so yeah, they should have just made it from butyl rubber or something sensible to begin with. However, this is the mask they got. 
it's not all too that bad as I said, other than the fact that it requires a mask to go on its mask. The voice diaphragm is good enough. In general it's a good design, I don't really like the straps on it, they're very cheap and elastic -y. they could have done something better with those. But all in all it's not a bad mask. Now I've noticed if I actually move my jaw in a certain way, it breaks the seal of the mask, which you might actually be able to hear on the camera. Hear that? That's broken the seal, so that's not a good design, is it? Again, maybe this is slightly too large for me, this mask, maybe a small than a better size. I don't know, because my eyes seem to be very central in the lenses. But overall, yeah, that's a bad design if you sort of stretch your mouth out and the mask moves away from your face when you do that. But overall, the M40 is not a bad design, other than the drinking tube continuously poking me in the face. I think the mask has worked wonders. Anyway, let me break the seal. Mmm, very strong, mmm, nasty smell of lavender. Not that lavender smells nasty, but it does in that quantity. So yes, the M40 has worked. So, debrief time. How well did the M40 work? Well, as a respirator, it's fairly comfortable and it did its job. However, as I've said before, I don't like the straps on this mask. They're that very basic kind of elasticated strap. Over time, these lose their sort of stretchiness or firmness. Um, so they kind of just get looser and looser over time, unfortunately. Um, the mask itself is very comfortable, though, other than that annoying drinking tube in there that keeps poking you in the face. I know you can take the drinking tube out, but then that defeats the purpose of having it in the mask. I definitely prefer myself the retractable style drinking tubes, you know, with a connector on that you can pull a lever and the tube goes in or out of your mouth that way. Strangely enough, the M17 did that much better than the M40. You know, having the lever where it would go forwards and back um, solves the problem perfectly. However, this having no lever, you know, kind of has a problem there. Overall, though, I do like the M40. I think it's a good design. However, as I said, my main complaint with it seems to be if I move my jaw a bit like this when I had the mask on, like that, um, it would push the mask away from my face, uh, breaking the seal, which is very bad. On most masks, if you move your face around or yawn or something like that, um, the, your face, you know, the seal of your face won't break because of how the mask is, um, you know, pressurised your face. However, with the M40, that's not the case. As said, this might not be the right size for me, I don't know. Maybe a small would have suited me better, but when I'm actually looking through this, my eyes do seem quite central in the um, lenses, so I really don't know. But there you go, that's the test of the M40 done with the second skin on it. Not that you need second skin to protect you from lavender um, sort of air freshener, but there you are. So yeah, can't really complain about the M40 too much. It was kind of a stopgap design, I guess, where the US made it just because they needed a 40mm mask. I think, in all honesty, though, I, the US would have been better if they just kept upgrading the M9 until they'd made a scaled-down M9 and 40mm of a voice diaphragm, a bit like Serbia did um, with the M2. But, you know, there you go. Yeah, the M40 is what it is. It works perfectly well for this kind of test. Um, but as said, I'm still going to be an Avon fanboy and say... I think the S10 was a better mask of this generation, and the FM12 certainly was a lot better than the M40, but there you go. The M40 is certainly not a bad mask, I think with higher quality straps on it, and a slightly better drinking tube system design, it would have been a really good mask.